What interests or hobbies should a person have if they're wanting to pursue being an athletic director? Well, obviously you want to have uh, interest in athletics. Uh, you also want to have an interest in leadership. Um, you know, do you play athletics yourself? Yep. Okay. And when, when you play athletics, you, you take on leadership roles. So that's the biggest thing. you got to have an interest in athletics, interest in leadership, and obviously an interest in kids. So that's the biggest thing. Uh, what is the most challenging part of your career? most challenging part is just probably the time commitment because it's basically, you know, 14-hour days, uh, six days a week. Uh, so basically, like when I first started out, I didn't have kids. It didn't bother me any. Now that I've got three kids and you never see your kids at all until maybe on a Sunday, that's the most challenging part, separating out your personal and professional life. So uh, what is the most rewarding part of your career? Most rewarding part is actually, believe it or not, is when the kids the kids succeed. Uh, they do well. They seem to enjoy themselves uh, on the fields or on the courts, things like that. Um, you know, obviously everybody wants to win a state title. We've won a few here. Yep. But it's not just about that. It's about uh, a kid that maybe doesn't get to play a whole lot and all of a sudden he goes out there and has a great game or something like that. Whether they win or lose, he has a great game. And, and that's kind of a rewarding part, seeing the kids that's in the hallways and maybe they – they don't uh, have a lot of things going on in their life, and, and, and maybe it's a soccer game or it's a, a football game or a softball game or something like that, and, and they get excel in that, and that's, that's kind of a rewarding part. That's pretty cool. Uh, so what's a typical day like? <laughs> oh, typical day. I get to school probably around 7 a.m., and then uh, you start out with, like me, I'm also the assistant principal, so I start out with a lot of those duties, you know, covering the buses in the morning, things like that. Then you come back in. Then you start to go in through your emails, clearing those things out. Um, and then you deal with a student here, a student there. Um, maybe it's somebody coming in and need a recommendation, or maybe it's somebody coming in to buy tickets. Um, then you get some parents coming in and things like that. So you want to talk to them about certain issues. I uh, had one coming in talking about scheduling and things like that earlier. Um, and then after that, it's lunch duty. And then after that, uh, in the afternoon, it's usually meetings and things like that. I just uh, got done meeting with a coach um, about this past soccer season and so forth. And then uh, all the time in between there, you got to get a lot of your computer stuff down. Uh, athletics now is tremendously involved with uh, computers and computer programming and things like that, scheduling. Um, there are several different programs we have to do now at state requirements, such as MyOSHA, Arbiter, uh, some things like that. So we have to get that stuff done on the computer. And then, of course, then at uh, 3 o'clock um, here shortly, we'll start game set up. Um, we'll get everything ready. People just think you show up to a game, the game happens, yeah. and you go home. But it's basically probably about an hour and a half, two hours before the game is when all my work starts. Once the game starts, it's a piece of cake then. Um, but before that, you're getting the water jugs out, you're getting the uh, scores table set up, you're getting the uh, programs ready. Um, it's just a lot of, you know, getting your music ready, things like that. It's a lot of stuff before the games. And then probably about tonight, we got a girls game, so probably about 9.30, I'll uh, wrap it up and head home and do it all again tomorrow. Sweet day. Uh, are you happy with your career choice? Um, I wouldn't change it, put it that way. You know, there's... <laughs> There's times where, uh, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you, you're working your butt off, you're putting in all these hours, you don't get to see your own family at all, and then all of a sudden you get a, a parent that comes in and wants to complain about their son's playing time or their daughter's playing time or something yeah. like that, and you, you sit there and say, you know what, I haven't seen my kid in, in three days, and you want me to, to be upset yeah. because your child is playing two extra minutes in a game, and that, that gets to be rough, mm -hmm. but sometimes the hardest part is you just got to bite your tongue and take it, you can't talk back or anything like that, obviously, and I don't get too upset anyways, but that's the hardest part is just uh, dealing with that, but, you know, that's probably 10% of the year. The other 90% is all rewarding things. Oh, yeah. Um, what skills would you say are required? I, I would say the number one skill, skill to be an athletic director is just organization. You have organization because um, then you're on top of everything because uh, I'll be honest with you, you're probably the same way. You don't realize this, but you expect athletics to be perfect, all right? The officials have to show up. The other team has to show up. The ticket sellers have to show up. The money has to be there. Um, everything has to be perfect because uh, if one thing is not perfect it's in athletics, it stands out like a sore thumb. Yep. Um, if all of a sudden an official doesn't show up, everybody in the world knows it. Yep. Um, you know, if the other team 
thought the game was at their place and not at your place, everybody in the world knows it. So in, in athletics, you really have to be perfect. So uh, that, that's a big challenge there. Uh, what, what type of education did you have to go through? I got my bachelor's degree, um, which got me into education. And I was a business teacher. I was doing some coaching and things like that. Then as I wanted to get into administration, I obviously had to go back and get my master's degree. So I got my master's in, in education or administration, uh, which then allowed me to get an administrative role. And then you went to two different schools. Where did you go? I went <coughs> to uh, St. Francis College or University of St. Francis now for my is bachelor's. Is that in Fort Wayne? That's in Fort Wayne. Yeah. Great school. And then um, for my master's, I, I ended up getting my master's at University of Dayton. And then, um, is there any, like, promotions or anything? Like, obviously, you got the uh, vice principal, but is there anything else, like, promotions-wise? Well, you know, when I first started here, um, I was hired in as the assistant principal and athletic director. Um, and then, over the course of time, I don't know if it's called a promotion, but I had duties added on where I also was then getting all the substitute teachers, um, and then I also was uh, added on as a transportation coordinator, so I do all the busing. Since that time, uh, of course, there was no pay to go with it, so I don't know if you call them promotions, um, but since that time, the county now handles all substitute teachers, so I don't do that anymore, but I still do all the transportation. I get all the uh, field trips, uh, you know, all the bus drivers for that, all the, obviously, athletic events. I get all the drivers, set all that stuff up, so... I do the transportation and then, um, of course, with the assistant principal duties. But I'll be honest with you, at Coldwater, I was at Lima Senior before I came here. Being assistant principal at Lima Senior compared to being assistant principal at Coldwater is night and day. Yeah, a lot uh, tougher over there. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, uh, There's <laughs> like a lot more entertaining, put it that way. <laughs> um, what type of opportunities for employment around here was there? Ooh, that's a, that's a good question. Opportunities for employment. Um, I think they're going to increase, um, and by that, it used to be, uh, you know, 20, 25 years ago, long before you were born, um, it used to be if you, uh, if you coached, uh, you know, basketball, you could be the athletic director. Um, anymore, it's becoming a uh, strictly administrative position, um, almost separated from coaching altogether. Um, so I think the opportunities are actually going to increase because it's, not a lot of people want to go to administration because the hours involved in it yeah. um, and also the headaches that gets involved in it. Plus, you work year-round when you're in administration. You don't get your summers off anymore. Um, so I think less and less people are going into administration. So therefore, I think the athletic jobs are going to start, I shouldn't say opening up, but there's going to be opportunities there. If you really want to be an athletic director, you can be an athletic director. Where before it was, a you know, Coach, uh, Coach Joe, you're not doing anything. Why don't you be the athletic director yeah. this year? That those days are long, long gone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if you could go back and redo something, what would that be? Well, that's a good question. That's a very good question. If I could go back and redo something, I would say I would probably stay in the classroom a little bit longer. I think I taught. Um, I thought I think I taught four years before I took over the assistant principal's job at Lima Senior, and then the assistant athletic director. And, um, you know, you, you figure your career in education is 35 years, so I'm going to be in administration then for 31 years. That's a long yeah. time to do the hours that it takes and the headaches Especially that it takes. Especially with kids now. Yes. Um, whereas if I would do it all over, I'd probably been in a classroom a lot longer, uh, you know, maybe 15 years in a classroom and then 20 years in administration. Just so, you know, it's just like anything. After a while, you can get burnt out from, you know, yeah. when you're in administration, you get... Basically, you get you just get beat on constantly. Lots of things. stress and yes, yeah, so there's a lot more headaches. stress and uh, yeah. and so, but you know, I, I'm pretty pretty down to earth, pretty stress free, so I don't get too worked up about it. Yeah. It doesn't bother me, yeah, but I don't really show it. So um, that would probably be the only thing I'd really change. Um, what's the range of pay from starting like to retirement? For an athletic director, it really depends. Each school is different. Uh, when you're at Salina, Coldwater, um, all the WBL schools, um, St. Henry, um, those are, I don't want to say full-time athletic directors, but they don't teach. Yeah. Um, they may have other duties such as um, 
you know, like myself, I'm an assistant principal, I do transportation, they got some of those other duties on there. Um, whereas you also have other schools like uh, New Knoxville and some of the New Bremen, some of the other smaller schools where you're still teaching yeah. half a day. So the pay will vary. Um, if you're at the other schools, your pay is going to be your teacher's pay, and then you'll probably get a supplemental on top of it, maybe $10,000 a year supplemental. Um, where you're my position, where you're full-time, you're on administrative salary schedule, and that depends on schools, but it can be anywhere from $60,000 a year up to, I don't know, $85,000 a year, 90000 And then what benefits are offered to athletic directors? Benefits such as what? Like insurance and stuff like that. Well, when you're in education, you get... You get I'm not going to lie to you, education, uh, uh, you know, teachers, administrators, anything they get, benefits are pretty good. Um, now, there's some factories out there as well that has really good benefits, but for the most part, you know, in, in the education world, the benefits are really good. Yeah. Uh, the re retirement setup is good. Um, you know, the, the medical insurance and all that stuff is good. Obviously, you know, for teachers, you get your summers off and stuff like that, so that's always pretty good. Yeah. But, you know, administrators, we don't get that. But the benefits are really good. Um, so, uh, I mean, as far as comparing them to, uh, to other companies, it just depends. Like like I said, it, it's education benefits are good. Pretty good. Yeah. Um, and what impact has being an athletic director been on your social life? Well, like I talked earlier, um, basically if you have kids, you do not get to see your kids. Yeah. Uh, literally, I leave before my kids get up in the morning, and tonight I'll get home and my kids will be asleep. So I will not see my kids at all today unless I saw them at lunch or something like that. Um, tomorrow will be the exact same thing. Um, Saturday will be the exact same thing. Sunday I'll get to see them. Um, and that's pretty much the, the biggest social thing you give up. And the other thing is, is... Um, that's a personal social thing as far as family. The other thing is, is um, when you're in our position, um, it's like me, I don't sit in the stands because I don't want to sit in the stands and, you know, how people are, they're up there yelling, yeah. you know, that coach is terrible, that coach don't know what he's doing, and I don't, I don't want to hear that because yeah. to me, that coach is part of my family. Right. And so I just <laughs> distance myself from it, and that, that, that can be hard because you lose some of your, some of your social um, interactions that way because... Uh, you know, like like if I go out and if I go out to eat or something like that, somebody may come up to me and want to know about why is this coach doing this, why is this coach doing that, and, and I don't want to talk about it yeah. at that point. But you're stuck, mm -hmm. so and that's so you kind of kind of distance yourself from that socially, and, and that's probably the biggest social things that you lose. And what advice would you give someone like me wanting to be an athletic director? I would say do not do it. <laughs> um, no, I. I there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, I, I, I would stay in the classroom as long as you can. Um, I've, I've got a former student of mine that's uh, been thinking about it, and I keep telling him stay in the classroom as long as you can. And, uh, and then if you want to get into athletics, I would get into athletics and do it for, for 10 to 15 years. I've been doing it now for 22 years. Um, and then after that, you got to be, if, unless you really are, are involved in it, and I love athletics here at Coldwater. Otherwise, you might want to look at another career path after that. Maybe it's getting into being a principal and things like that where your hours are cut down a lot more because yeah. um, it's tough. For me, it's going to be tough because I'm going to have to do it because I want to. Um, but for 31 years, I'm going to be working, you know, 70 yeah, hours, hours a week. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a long time to do that. But uh, obviously, it's a choice I made. Plus, it's something I still enjoy doing, so I want to do it. But, um, you know, when I look back when all is said and done, I'm going to wish I had that time back, but until yeah. then I won't continue to do it. <laughs> yep.